with coverage you can count on. This is WNEM TV 5 News. Well, good morning to you. Hope you're staying warm. Lots of coffee consumption happening here this morning. Just trying to warm up. It is a chiller out there this morning. Here is a live look over Birch Run. Those conditions looking pretty good and uh, bare. Not a lot of cars out on the road. Thanks so much for waking up with us and spending some of your time with us. Today is December 27th. I'm Blake Keller. Meteorologist John Gross is in the first one five weather center. Both trying to keep warm this morning. Absolutely. Hey, Good morning, Blake. Yeah, plenty of coffee. I know between me and you both <laughs> yeah. and uh, hopefully you're able to stay nice and warm. Still enjoying your holiday weekend as it's going underway. You can believe it 2020 wrapping up here within the next few days for your Sunday looking mainly dry, but we will have several chances for some rain and snow as we get into tonight and then leading into next week. So here we go. We'll take you live out the door to downtown Saginaw for this morning. Huntington Event Park Center still see a little bit of snow out on the sidewalks and parking lots, so those areas still could be slick if you're going to be stepping out for this morning. Keep that in mind with temperatures right now. Those keep us mainly in the mid to upper 20s. 27 there in Saginaw. It's 25 in Lapeer. To the north, 27 in Ascoda, and then to the west, 28 right now in Mount Pleasant. Sustained winds out the door. And good news is they're not as strong as what we've had days previous, mainly from the south and east right now at about 5 upwards of 10 miles per hour. Pinpoint Doppler radar live from MBS this morning, also keeping us mainly dry trying to pick up in a few light flurries near Ludington, but I think most of your Sunday does stay dry. It's just going to be an increase in cloud cover as we continue throughout the afternoon. Now, as we go on your sky tracker, this will be the next disturbance we're going to keep an eye on for you near the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, some rain and snow that does look to be arriving on our doorstep by later this evening and then giving us the chance for some light rain and snow as we go into the overnight period tonight for today's forecast. Temperatures overall will be back into the mid 30s again today, mainly dry a few peaks of sun. We can't rule it out, but not for everybody. And again, we'll have evening rain and snow as we go throughout the rest of your Sunday evening. We'll take a look at the full extended forecast. What we can expect as we get closer to 2021 in just a little bit. Blake, we'll send it back to you. All right, John, very good. Developing this morning a string of violence in the vehicle city after three separate shootings across Flint this weekend. An infant and three adults are dead. The first just after midnight Saturday. Creditrius Keaton Williams shot and killed in the front yard of a home on West Pulaski by the homeowner. That homeowner now in police custody. Just down the street on East Pulaski, Flint police responded to a shooting and found a woman shot dead. An infant boy also shot. Who later died at the Hurley Medical Center. Hours later, 25 year old Naomi Anthony was found dead in Hasselbring Park. Her death also the result of gunshot wounds. In a statement, Flint Mayor Sheldon Neely said, I am mourning the loss of four lives to violence in our community. These deaths are devastating and incomprehensible, especially when innocent lives are lost. Flint police are continuing their investigations and have identified at least one suspect. I pray for justice for the victims healing for their families and peace for our community. Anyone with information about these crimes are asked to contact Crime Stoppers. That's 1-800-422-JAIL. You will remain anonymous. And this weekend, COVID-19 cases worldwide topped 80 million, with the U.S. as the global leader in confirmed cases with nearly 19 million. As Lilia Luciano reports, holiday travel could make things worse. The CDC says almost 2 million people are now vaccinated. Still, health officials say that won't be enough to prevent an explosion in cases after the holidays. With COVID infections smashing records and hospitals pushed to the brink, there is new fear tonight of a post-Christmas surge. More than 7 million checked in at airports this week. Many will be flying back. Even half of what happened over Thanksgiving holiday, we're in deep trouble. In the nation's latest epicenter, Los Angeles County, a patient dies of COVID every 10 minutes. And across the state, ICU capacity is zero. The governor with this warning. We can have a surge on top of a surge on top of a surge. Nationwide, hospitalizations are up in 25 states and D.C. Nearly 120,000 people spent Christmas in a hospital bed. In Cleveland, critical care doctor Sherry Williams seeing the death toll firsthand. And it's heartbreaking, quite honestly. 2020 is on track to being the deadliest year in U.S. history. Too many sharing the grief of the first holiday without that loved one. 
For 21 years, Brandy Hauser took charge over the household's holidays, but she died of COVID two weeks before Thanksgiving. It's hard not having her to actually tell me herself she loves me or have her here in person. When Christmas came, her husband Chris made sure to keep the tradition alive for their 11-year-old, Jude. We did a gingerbread making and then the hot cocoa. If she had been there, he said he would have told her. You're beautiful and I love you. On Christmas Eve, LA County saw its deadliest day since the pandemic began. Today, over 6,000 people remain hospitalized here. Some hospitals are reportedly running out of PPE and oxygen. And health officials here are urging people to avoid calling 911 unless it's absolutely necessary. Lilia Luciano, CBS News, Burbank. As a COVID relief bill still remains up in the air, unemployment benefits for millions of Americans have officially ran out. More than 12 million laid off workers were set to receive their final unemployment payment of $300 this weekend, according to the Century Foundation. The COVID-19 relief bill, which arrived at Mar-a-Lago Friday for President Donald Trump to sign, would have extended the number of weeks people can stay on two key pandemic unemployment programs, as well as increased weekly benefits by $300 for all through mid-March. Earlier in the week, President Trump said he would not sign the legislation passed by Congress. He wanted $2,000 for a stimulus check to Americans rather than the $600 proposed. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi introduced a st standalone bill Thursday to make that happen, but Republican lawmakers voted against it. And the CDC order preventing evictions from happening during the pandemic is also set to expire by the end of the year. But since it does not cancel or freeze rent, all tenants back rent will be due January 1st if the moratorium is allowed to expire. About 9.2 million renters who have lost employment income during the pandemic are believed to be behind on rent, according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. The COVID-19 relief package would provide $25 billion in rental assistance for those left unemployed during the pandemic. All right, TV5 News time right now is 836. A local staple gets a new message, the latest step in rebuilding Sanford.